Hey guys, it's Mal and Jason from Binge Mode. We wanted to tell you about the Ringer's yes. upcoming Binge Mode Rewatchables mashup live event Woo! on Wednesday, January 24th at Largo at the Coronet right here in Los Angeles. It'll be me, Jason Concepcion, Mallory Rubin, Shay Serrano, and Bill Simmons for a high school football spectacular covering Friday Night Lights and Varsity Blues. So put on your shoulder pads or your whipped cream bikini. Mm. Let's go, goddammit! Head to Largo-LA.com to purchase your tickets now. Clear eyes. Clear eyes. Full hearts. Full hearts. Don't snooze. Buy your tickets now for Wednesday, January 24th at Largo at the Coronet in Los Angeles. Yeah. I still love our intro music tape. It's the best. People bother us all the time about it. Um, I, the big debate on this podcast is whether we take it public. Do we share our music with the people? Mm. Everyone wants it. Everyone wants it as a ringtone. I kind of like that they want it. You kind of want to keep the people keep keep them wanting more Tate. So I say no. What are your thoughts? Yeah, we're not going to flood the market. I, I have the MP3 yeah. file. I could put it out there. I could tweet it out right. in a one minute snippet. But you know what? We're not going to do that because. You know, it, we're going to have people reach out to us one day and then then we'll give them a CD. You know, it'll be like a best of and then and then they can have it. But that's like 12 years down the line. Nice. And, and if people still have ringtones, I mean, good for them. I'm glad they're right. holding out. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's about 415 on the East Coast on Friday, uh, January 19th. And Chris Holtman is still undefeated in Big Ten play tape. I just wanted to. Uh, as of this recording, I want mm-hmm. everyone to know that Chris Holtman, will he ever lose a Big Ten game? Nobody knows. Ever in his career? I don't know. It's possible. I mean, he might not. He might run the table this year. Obviously going to run the table next year when he yep. starts getting his own guys in here. Um, so we're, we have another casual Friday on the on the docket. Uh, not a ton of games to talk about. Not a ton of action. We, we did a pod on Wednesday. We're contractually obligated to do another one on Friday or <laughs> we will be fired. So here we are. Tate, Tate and I always show up for work. Um, and we always put in the work, but the question, Tate, is what kind of work are we putting in today? What is it that you want to talk about? And I should say, for those of you who are tuning in and that are excited for the manager stories, uh, we, we do have a bunch of manager stories coming later. We're, we're going to tease that and say, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to listen to us talk about some other bullshit before we get to that fun <laughs> stuff. So, <laughs> That'll um, be at the end of the podcast. Tate, what, That's a tease. What, what, what do you, what, what's, what's your big, uh, what's, what's going on in your world that you want to talk about? Uh, well, I mean, there's a whole lot, but I, I'm going to keep it to basketball because that's what we're supposed to be doing on this podcast. And the the big thing that's going on in, in my world of basketball, I have to watch all these NBA games. I don't know if people know this, but I have to say mm. very informed and up to date on everything that happens in the NBA uh, for one of my other Tate, jobs. what do you think about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and putting together everything that happens in the NBA. And, you know, it, it's a it's an arduous process, but it is a it is a thing that occurs every week of my life for the past three years. Um but this week, it's a good time because there's been a lot of fights, Mark Titus. I don't know if you've seen this, but we're getting NBA I have, fights. I have not. Yeah, we. I have not. But I've, I've heard. I've heard people talk that I all I know about is some secret tunnel with the Clippers. So fill me in, please. Yes. Yeah, so that was the round one. So I'm gonna split it up. There, there have been three rounds of fights that that people care about. There, round one is the the one you just mentioned, Clippers Rockets. We got Chris Paul. Chris Paul returned to Los Angeles. He was a Clipper for six years, right? He, he loved the city, or so he said he did, and he loved the franchise. And he he at one point said he wanted to have a statue outside of Staples Center, but then someone told him that he played for the Clippers, and they don't make those for Clippers players. And then I think he decided to tra- <laughs> trade himself to the Rockets. Anyways, came home. He got a nice standing ovation. He ignored the crowd, and the, it was like the one time that you have a guy come home, and you know mostly they're excited when people are nice to him. The crowd didn't even boo him; they cheered, and he just ignored them. He was like, "I'm above you guys," which was nice. great, and that set the tone for the night, which was Blake Griffin, Chris Paul. The whole time they were together, we all knew they didn't probably like each other. Well, that that's been settled. They do not like each other. Blake and Chris are going back at each other, calling each other, you know, soft. You're soft. No, you're soft. And then, you know, this is how soft they really were. (laughs) They were so soft that uh, Trevor Ariza, Gerald Green, James Harden, Chris Paul all went down a secret tunnel 
to the locker room, to the to the home locker room of the Clippers, which, you know, it, it came out afterwards that Harden and Chris Paul weren't in the, the caravan to go there. But there's no way that they didn't learn about the, the hallway from Chris Paul, who happened to play for the Clippers for six years, like I said. What so, What is, let me stop you here. What Explain the secret tunnel thing to me. Like, what do we mean when we say secret tunnel? Just like a... <laughs> And all, like a, a tunnel that people don't really use a ton, but everyone knows. Like the word "secret," I feel is being exaggerated here. Yes, because it, it can't possibly be a secret t- tunnel. Like it's someone <laughs> would someone pull a book on the bookshelf and then like it flipped all around, like a Scooby Doo bullshit going on. Like what what do we mean by secret tunnel? Does anybody know? I don't know, but everyone's treating it like it's the Pentagon, uh, and they're like sneaking out underneath it to get outside to the Washington right. Monument or something. I, I don't understand how it all played out. But what I would have to say is, I know in that locker room, the visitors' locker room is literally if it's not next door, it's really close to the home locker. Like the, both locker rooms are right next to oh, each really? other. Oh really? So it couldn't have been a long nice. hallway anyway. You know, it's not like it was. They nice. made it sound like they went like three miles underneath the Staples Center to the other side of the building and popped up and made this whole thing happen. My favorite thing about this, I'm calling bullshit. Yeah, call bullshit. I, I'm gonna, it's, let me, it's I'm gonna say, tunnel. I'm gonna call bullshit and say, I'm gonna say that this is the NBA media uh, doing what they always do and trying to make things some cool. big story yes. off the court. Yeah, because because they know that no one gives a shit about the <laughs> NBA, be, like in terms of the competition, because we all know it's gonna be Cavs and Warriors again. So, yes. um, really, any all anyone wants to watch the NBA for is just to see highlights and dunks, and it's awesome. And I watch the NBA for that, and it's great. But then the NBA media is like, no, we have to take our sport more seriously. So let's try to get people, let's try to create some storylines and make up like crazy shit like secret tunnels. And yeah, it probably wasn't like that. Well, that's anyway. exactly what happened in this case, and it it came out that. Uh, there were no punches thrown. Nothing happened. The the funniest part of the whole thing is that the Clippers apparently called the LAPD, which is, I mean, you talk about soft. What? Someone, someone <laughs> called, like Chris Paul comes to fight you when you're Blake Griffin and Austin Rivers. And that's the other thing. Austin Rivers is at the middle of this controversy. He's in a suit talking oh, junk to, the, to Trevor Ariza, who, you know, is a guy that starts for the team that's number two in the Western Conference, and he's in a suit talking junk to him. Uh, anything that's Austin Rivers related will usually lead to an altercation at some point, and that's what happened with this. Uh, everyone get out scot-free. Uh, you know, you know what? Big Someone, name. Here's, something, here's something Austin Rivers related that didn't lead to an altercation. Uh, when he sprayed <laughs> Zeller for the game winner. Well, you know uh, what's North funny Carolina. about that? It almost um, led to an altercation because I was at uh, at South Point Mall two days later, and I saw Austin Rivers outside, and he was getting <laughs> he was getting dinner with some random female. I don't know who it was, but he was having a nice dinner, and, or so uh, he thought he was going to have a nice dinner. And I walked by, saw him outside, did a double take with a couple of my f- friends, and we we're like, "Oh my god, is that and, really Austin Rivers?" And then we proceeded to harass him, and he had to go back inside to eat his dinner. So I did my and part, then I Marcus. farted on him. <laughs> no. I farted on him as I walked away. I, that son of a bitch. I, I said things that you can't say. I, I said things you can't say in 2018 <laughs> to Austin Rivers that day. You um, served his ass. Yeah, I was so, a young so man. That's, that's fight number one. That's fight number one. Give yes. me fight number two. Fight number two. We're going to Orlando. Uh, did you know that Aaron Aflalo still plays basketball in the National Basketball Association, Mark Titus? Mm, I he, did not know this. He no. does. I, I forgot that he played at UCLA. To be honest with you. Like, he's, he's always like the lost guy of the uh, UCLA era, even though he was like first team All American. I always forget, I always remember like Darren Collison and Kevin Love. Well, I he's about Aaron Aflalo, I try to tell everyone he is the Corey Brewer of the UCLA team back then. He's the third guy. So yeah, he's yeah. not Joe Kim Noah. He's not Al Horford. He's Corey Brewer. He's not Collison. He's not Love. He's Aaron Aflalo. And he's averaging three points, some points per game, the worst of his career. And they're playing the Timberwolves, and he decided that he should just swing and throw a punch, which is not soft. Throwing a punch on the court in front of everybody, not soft move. That's he does soft, that. No. Uh, he only gets suspended two games, though, so that's pretty soft. Um so that's the second one. The third one is finally Michael Carter Williams, a guy we all lo- know and love, and uh, Jason Smith from the Wizards, and my cousin Tim Frazier. They're all in altercation. Uh, Tim Frazier and Jason Smith and MTW all get tossed from this one. It's another fight. Uh, this is that's the third fight of the week, round three. The best mm. part about this whole thing, though, is Popovich says that uh, all these are are silly, and basically the NBA is soft. And the only time a fight actually ever happened in the NBA was. Uh, when our boy Ron Artest went to the to the stands up in Detroit and Auburn Hills right. that one time, Which, so we need more of that in the NBA. That's what would get me to watch the NBA. Doesn't isn't that like a Jalen and Bill thing where they talk about holding me back and all the guys fake it and of course and that and that one of their running yeah 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 that's cool. Well, thanks for the update, Tate. Thanks for the NBA. We should make that the weekly Friday thing where I just ask you fill me in on the NBA because I I watch like one half of one game every week until. 
I'm not an NBA hater, by the way. Like, I want to walk back. I kind of went at the NBA regular season. I, I actually love the NBA. Well, I just, I, I think, I think there's definitely something going on where like the media, um, I don't know. The meme game in the NBA is out of control. It's it's unbelievable, and they they like manufacture shit out of nothing, and it's crazy. And they're also gotten to the all. point now where they're trying to cover the NBA like the NFL, as if it's a twenty four hour news cycle where everyone cares. The reason that people care right. about the NFL twenty four hours a day is because people get hurt twenty four hours a day in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> did did the guy that got lit up going across the middle is he still alive yeah, we need 20 we need updates it's, every hour it's literally just checking in medically to see if everyone's still okay yeah. that's all it is it's not, it's not <laughs> because they care about the product they care about people's health oh uh, uh, that's funny uh let's talk about college hoops then um there were a handful of games i want to mention uh the first three we don't really need to get into too much uh the first one I want to I want to bring up is Texas beat Texas Tech at at home, um, and the only reason I mention that is because Texas Tech, I had just I, I wrote a I wrote a little article for the on the Ringer um, about whether Kansas was going to lose the Big Twelve this year, whether like just pretty much anal- handicapping like what are the odds that Kansas is the streak is going to get snapped? They mm. won thirteen in a row. It's thirteen, right? Yep. It's 13. 13 yeah, it's thirteen. Thirteen in a row. 14, they're, they're trying to break the record to make it fourteen. Yeah. So I, I wrote this piece. I was basically like, just, I mean, the conclusion is like, of course the streak's going to continue. Why would you think anything else? But I was just trying to have some fun and, and <laughs> talk about how the Big 12's great and everything. And I had it all written for, uh, what was this? Wednesday night. It was all done, um, ready to publish. And I had Texas Tech on there. I had I said a lot of nice things. I was like, I think Texas Tech is the chosen one. I think like if there's any team that's going to do it, it's going to be Texas Tech because uh, they play great defense they had only lost one game at this point in the conference, mm-hmm. um, and and it, it was uh, I think at, at Oklahoma. Yeah, that was the only game they'd lost, um, and they had they had like a favorable schedule. So I was thinking like Texas Tech might might get it done. And then I turned on the TV that night, and Texas Tech loses at Texas. So the point I'm making, Tate, is Kansas is back in the driver's seat. They have a one game lead on everybody else in the Big Twelve, and the streak's going to continue. So. Um, just as soon as I had a glimmer of hope, it, it got taken away. So yeah, so that's, stop. That's the only reason. I stop to being that. hopeful. Congratulations to Shaka Smart. I, I watched a little bit. I watched the highlights of that game, and basically it was Kerwin Roach. Right, Roach was the one that really changed the whole game. He had like twenty. Yeah, he had twenty points, yeah. maybe twenty some points. Texas Tech. Texas Tech's offense is uh has, is prone to just be absolutely awful at times, and that's a problem because you got to score to win. People forget. <laughs> Make some um, shots. Another game I want to bring up and. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to cut your laughter short when I mention this. Um, so we're gonna have to do some editing. Otherwise, we're gonna have an hour long podcast of you just laughing. Wichita State lost at home again, <laughs> Tate. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wichita State lost to SMU. SMU is a good team, so uh, it's not that bad. But um, I just thought we'd we'd revisit. You said you said you were done with Wichita State like before Thanksgiving. You were done. <laughs> you said I'd get them out of my face. I, I get called, them the hell out I of my face. I called Marcus. I, I called McDuffie McDuffle, and I said I was done with them in December. Mm. And it was it was wrong to do, but it turns out it was right. It turns out I was right on accident right. by by trying to 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 slight the whole program. Yeah. But I want to say Tim Jankovic, aka the Jank. They call him Jank. I've never heard something that's supposed to be <laughs> positive that rhymes with shank, but it's called the Jake. Yeah, yeah they call it yeah. Coach Jank Tim Jankovic. I like him a lot. I like SMU. I feel like they're a pretty solid program now because of Larry Brown and all he brought there, which was bags. And uh, I don't know. I, I thought that was a big win for SMU. I'm sorry, Wichita State. I don't mean to laugh at you. I don't want to laugh at them, Titus, but well, I can't help myself. Yeah, you, you abs- first of all, you, you absolutely do. But I, I just wanted to mention that because we haven't talked about Wichita State in a very long time because you said you're done with them. And um, yeah, they were ranked seventh, I believe. Mm-hmm. And they, they lost to SMU. So you can you can double down on your I'm done with these guys thing. Um, and then finally, the other the other quick game I wanted to bring up, and then we'll talk about the the two games that I I think deserve a little longer discussion. Uh, Michigan got blown out at Nebraska by twenty. Um, and the reason I bring this up, and it's probably confusing to people that are like, I thought Michigan was kind of hot. What happened? How do you lose at Nebraska by twenty? Mm-hmm. First of all, Nebraska up and coming team, sleeping giant Tate. I said this on the pod with Bill. I'm gonna stick by it. Those facilities, those facilities, they're they're worth at least fifteen points. So. Um, <laughs> I think there's your answer right there. But secondly, Michigan, I had this thought I was watch- as I was watching the game, and then I saw like discussions after the game was over that that kind of confirmed what I was thinking. 
I was thinking like Michigan has played a thousand games in the last week. Because I, I I mean it felt like the Michigan Michigan State it felt like the Michigan Purdue game where Purdue was in Ann Arbor and it came down to Isaac Haas getting fouled and hitting the free throws to beat Michigan. It felt like that game was like three days ago and since then they played at Michigan State, Maryland at home, and now at Nebraska. So I looked it up. They will have played. They're in the middle of a stretch um, where they will have played six games in fifteen days, which is a lot. This is not the NBA. This is this is college, and that is a lot of basketball. That's insane. And who, who makes that schedule? Jim Delaney does, and the the point I'm bringing up is that we are now seeing like the first for, for those not in the know, the Big Ten moved their the Big Ten tournament up a week because they wanted to have it in Madison Square Garden, the heart of Big Ten country, New York yes. City. Um, <laughs> they wanted to have it there, but the Big East has the contract for the week that the the, the conference tournaments traditionally are. So Jim <laughs> Delaney they are instead of in the heart saying, of the Big East, where New York is, yeah, because they're actually in the heart of the Big East. Uh, Jim Delaney, instead of saying the obvious thing of like, oh, well, it was a good idea, I suppose, but I guess we should just move it back to Indiana and Chicago where it always is and everybody loves it. Um, instead of that, he's like, no, you know what we'll do? We'll move it up a week. And mm-hmm. by doing that, the Big Ten now has to like cram their schedule together. So none of the teams get rest. I looked at, I was curious like if Ohio State has a streak that's as bad as Michigan's. They actually have a worse one. They're in the middle of a six game and 14 day stretch. Um, but they're winning, so you know, like it's not that big of a deal. Like we'll we're, we'll we'll overcome it. We're 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 good enough to overcome it. But uh, but does I don't that, know. This does, is wild. does that this, mean that every single team at some point during the stretch will have to play mm-hmm. six games in fourteen to sixteen days in the Big Pretty Ten? Pretty much every every team in the Big Ten. Like so, to give an example for people that don't really pay that much attention to scheduling, like usually teams get like a quick turnaround is like three days. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, sometimes every so often there'll be like a two-day turnaround. Like you'll play on Saturday and then Monday. And that happens like once every so often. Um, but usually, like if I bet I, I, North Carolina, for example, like an ACC team, probably they probably have games where they get like four or five days off in between every so often, you know? And then usually it's like three days, and then four days or whatever. But but all the Big Ten teams are basically like two days off game, three days off game, two days off game, three days off game. And it's just like that throughout the season. And... So they they played those for everyone had to play two games in December like in the middle of the non-conference schedule and that was sort of different and it was sort of fun because it was like oh man right after the ACC challenge now we have to play a conference game this is kind of wild and it was the jury was still out I think the jury is going to decide that this is a terrible idea by <laughs> here in the next uh, month or so. They're going to be like, this was a very bad idea. All Every Big Ten team is going to be gassed. Um, but right now, Purdue, Purdue and Ohio State fans love it. But the rest of the conference is like, this is a, this is an awful idea. So well, let's be honest. Tom Izzo, to up. Tom Izzo definitely loves it because it's going to make his team tougher oh, for it, tournament yeah. time. Um, I, I got a quick aside just talking about uh, bringing up Michigan State real quick. Have you seen this A-Rod tour that he's been on? What? <laughs> yes, exactly. That makes no I, I'm, sense. I'm proud, that makes I'm no proud sense. to say no. Yeah, there's there's no way that that should make any sense, that statement in general. But A-Rod was at the Duke-Miami game. He, he's obviously in Miami and is a big fan of Miami basketball, whatever. He's at the Duke-Miami game, but he's with the Duke team. He like does his interview separately with the, with Coach K. He's like around the Duke team or whatever. That's fine. And you know, in my head, I'm like, well, those are those are A Rod's two teams. He likes Miami, but he knows they're not going to really compete probably. So he's going to you know saddle up to a champion like he did with the Yankees and pull for Duke. Cool, makes sense. And then yep. I see today at practice, he's with Michigan State and Tom Izzo. Why is A Rod at their mm. practice? What is going on? And then I took A-Rod, it a step A-Rod. further, and I'm like, who's at Michigan? Oh my God, Derek Jeter, and Derek Jeter's oh. aligned with Jordan Brand, which is aligned with Carolina. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, A. Rod's just going anti everything. Jeter, he's going Michigan State because of Michigan. He's going Duke. I'm, A. Rod's everywhere, and I, just watch out, folks. If you haven't seen oh A. Rod in your city, he's coming. That's amazing. the 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 red string corkboard theories that you always have for Duke and Carolina, I. I can never get enough of it, Tate. Never, never change. It's amazing. I'm just letting but you know I'm, what's we, going on. It sounds like we have another Drake situation on our hands with A. Rod. Yes, we, it's um, yeah. They're they're going to be fighting each other out. They're going to at the final. Well, whoever wins the national title, they're they're both going to be like elbowing each other to to get on the stage and hold the trophy up because they're like, I was a fan of these guys all along. And, and A. Like, Rod's no, going to wear white, and, where you know you just don't know who he's pulling for. You're just like, oh, I, yeah, get, right. I guess he's pulling for the home team. Um, I don't know. <laughs> So two two games I, I think are worth 
talking about a little bit. Actually, this first one, not so much. I just want to uh, – Virginia beats Georgia Tech 64-48. <laughs> to 48. Our our guy, Ben Lammers, who we have not talked about in a very long time. It's We we've, we probably have not talked about him in as long as we've not talked about Wichita State. Um, ben Lammers had four points and five turnovers. That's not a good – that's not a good game. Um, you want to you want to do better than that usually in college basketball, but uh, this was another example. Virginia held a team to 19 points, and I guess that's the only reason I want to talk about this. Tate is like th- we need a name for when Virginia holds a team to under 20 points. I, I I love it. There's nothing more fun to me that makes my life sound miserable. Let me let me walk that back. <laughs> there are. Fi- <laughs> I was about to say there's nothing more fun to me than seeing Virginia hold a team to 19 or 20 less than 20 points in the first half but there are there are a few more th- fun things to me than that um but yeah we, i i want a name for this this is like I, a this is a thing that like a, a phenomenon you, that you, every time you check a score it's like halftime score virginia's up 36 to 19 36 to 12 and it's it's amazing do you uh you want to hear what my idea for the line is what i want to call it what's what's your idea the sammy zaglinski line Ooh, okay. Nobody remembers Sammy like so Zaglinski. Nobody remembers his defense. No one no. remembers him at Virginia. And, no. you know, Sammy Zaglinski is a hardworking guy, 6'1 guard out of Philadelphia, PA. I wore number 13, yeah. and that's what he did. He held people under 20 points. But no one's going to sign up for that because so, nobody wants to remember Sammy Zaglinski. I'm sorry, no, Sammy. I don't remember him. I didn't start watching Virginia basketball until like 2013. The well, only thing I know about Virginia basketball pre 2013. <laughs> was uh when um Dante Jones dunked all over that Virginia dude and then started doing push ups. I just remember that play. Ugh, that's but, that gross. Shit. Um yeah, I so what's his name? Sammy Zaglinski. I don't like it. That's too hard to say. <laughs> I, was I just sing- like saying the I was Zaglinski sing- line. <laughs> they kept him under Zaglinski. the Zaglinski line. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to remember that through the end of this podcast, even let alone moving for uh, Zaglinski. <laughs> Gliz, Glizinski? Zaglinski. Um, the the only thing I thought was uh, you could say like uh, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I was trying to think of something with Tony Bennett, and you say like you hold someone under 20 points in the first half, you, you gave him a Tony because it's like a Tony mm. award. You oh yeah, the, yeah. Like Virginia gave him the Tony. That's Virginia way better. Virginia gave Georgia Tech People the Tony. People remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I think Virginia fans are going to latch onto that one. Yeah. Oh, we got so him that, that's my new thing. That's I, I just created something that uh Virginia Virginia gave Georgia Tech a Tony, held them to under twenty. Um, yeah, but then the, the other the other comment I had that kid that you that I didn't know about until the the uh, Carolina game, Hunter, DeAndre Hunter, DeAndre Hunter yes. on Virginia, yes, that dunked on Joel Berry and just shattered my world because like Virginia is not supposed to have athletes like that. He had seventeen and seven off the bench again for Virginia. Um, I, I think he's playing too well, Tate. I think the Who's are in trouble. He's going to leave early. That's the vibe I'm getting. Tony's got to dial it back a little bit. They got to figure out a way to. He's got to dig into the Tom Izzo adversity bag and try to find a way to slow this guy down so he s- sticks around for a few years. Because I don't know. I re- I really like what I'm seeing from him. Well, they're they're going to really tighten up that rotation as Tony Ben is prone to do. And uh, yeah, he'll probably yeah. lose some minutes. So. But I, I really like Hunter. I think he's really good. Lammers is the one I'm really upset about. But have have you seen this Josh Pastner thing? And I don't know if it's really a big story or not, but. He's like getting blackmailed and extorted. Yeah, yeah. We talked. We we brought it up like initially. Yeah, we talked about. I, I just feel like there's the a pod. there's we a lot of stuff bit, going yeah. on with Josh Pastner. So I don't blame him. I just wish Ben Lammers had a leader, you know, just to make him better because he deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um. The other the other game I wanted to talk about. This was probably the game of the week. Uh, two teams that you're very much out on. <laughs> because, <laughs> because they're not power conference teams but I'm not um, St. Mary's beats Gonzaga goes to the kennel beats Gonzaga I picked St. Mary's at the beginning of the year as the team I thought was going to stay undefeated the longest mm. and they inexplicably lost at at the Wood Legacy to Washington State who's not a very good team and then they turned around and lost in overtime to Georgia who is kind of a decent team um, so those are St. Mary's only two losses on the year but other than that, they've played a garbage schedule, and they've kind of they lost those two games, completely disappeared. No one's talking about them. Um, if anybody's going to talk about them, it would be me because I, I coming into this year, I really love them. I haven't even paid attention to them. <laughs> they look pretty good against Gonzaga. Jock Landell is back, Tate. In his last six games, Jock Landell is averaging twenty about twenty four points and twelve rebounds. And this is for a team that plays very, very, very slow. They're like Virginia slow. How slow St. Mary's plays. So. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know if you watched. I, I'm You're going to be shocked. Not watch that game, but it was a pretty good game. I did watch this game, and uh, well, the second half. I wait, what? Say. Yeah, wait, what? I watched the second half. Sorry, guys, I did it. Uh, Jock Landell, let's get off his jock. Let's be honest. What happened in that second half? He got Jonathan Williams matched up on him, a guy that's like six seven, six eight, and he was just owning him in the, on the block. Killian Tilly didn't do anything to help him out. So it's not Jonathan Williams' no. fault. Jock Landell just bodied him the whole game. My favorite player on St. Mary's, and I, I'm, I'll be honest, I watched the Georgia game, and I watched the second half of this game. But whoever head Ben Herbinson is, Calvin Herbinson, he's probably yep. my top five favorite player of the year so far. He just wets threes. He's got a headband on. Yeah. He's having a lot of fun. <laughs> he's got the goggles. He's got the goggles. You got Krebs, who's yeah. like way too close to Krebs. The, uh, they, they got they got a lot of fun kid, guys on their team. The kid, uh, the Nar, the point guard is he. He's really fun to watch. Yeah, he's throwing those like pa- he's throwing like hook shot passes. Um, to guy like whipping it around. He, he's they said he's second in the country in assists behind Trey Young. Uh, so yeah, St. Mary's. Kind of, I, I really want to see a St. Mary's Virginia game, and I'm not like St. Mary's. If you look on <laughs> Ken Palm, and everybody should because that's the college basketball gospel. They have like one of the best offenses in the country if, in efficiency because they basically have a ton of skilled shooters around Jock Landell, mm-hmm. and if you have, if you double Landell, the guys hit threes. If you don't, then Landell kills you. Um, it's just that they're not super explosive and they play a garbage schedule and all of these are fine. And I'm not saying St. Mary's is like a great team, but if I really need to see a Virginia efficient defense versus a St. Mary's efficient offense and just and just see what happens when when two just very slow teams. I want to see how many people that don't care about either one of those teams actually watch that game. That might be the lowest rated college basketball game of all time <laughs> if those two teams played. <laughs> and I would absolutely love it. It's um, the who and the Gales. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, Emmett Nar played yeah. 40 minutes. Uh, That's my favorite stat of that game. He didn't yeah. come out the entire game. I want to give a shout out to uh, Hachimura, the uh, mm, the Rui. kid for uh, Rui Hachimura for Gonzaga. They said during the broadcast, I, it, it sounded like it It didn't sound true to me, but then I thought about it more and I was like, yeah, it might be true. He, they said he's one of only five Japanese uh, basketball players to ever play Division One ever. And that Japan has never had a uh, NBA draft pick ever, and like so, this guy is basically the greatest Japanese basketball player of all time, and he's what like twenty maybe. So um, what? Yeah, that's cool. Yuta Tabuzi is. I know Yuta Tabuzi. I just looked up Yuta Tabuzi. He played at is, BYU. Is, 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 what about Zaglinski? Zaglinski. <laughs> uh, Zagl- Zaglinski definitely was. Zaglinski. Um. So my question to you, Tate, now is, do you care about... I guess the exercise I want to do with you is this. Do I care about Japan? Gonzaga, yes. No. no. Gonzaga and Arizona and Arizona State, I think, were the three ranked teams. Um, Arizona State has now lost, like, what, four of seven or something? They, they just lost to Stanford again. They are yep. sliding in a very big way. Um, Arizona's had their problems. They uh, lost at Atlantis, lost in Colorado, uh, but otherwise, I I still believe in them more than most. But the, basically, the question is this: Now that Gonzaga has lost to St. Mary's, I wanted to do a thing where we like evaluate the West Coast teams, West Coast basketball, and <laughs> just tell me, do you care? I looked up, I looked up the top fifty on Ken Palm, and yes. I took every team that's on the West Coast, and I'm going to go through them in order as they're listed on Ken Palm, and tell me, is this a team you care about? Is this a team that, um, if if I told you they were playing. I don't know. For for example, Creighton. Would you watch the game? Um, that that's that's the question for you, Tate. We'll start with Gonzaga. They're right, they're the they're the <laughs> highest on Ken Palm. Do you care about Gonzaga in in light of what we saw against St. Mary's? Yes, I do. I do too. I I still think Gonzaga is a very good team. They got Gonzaga made the title yeah. game last year. They actually matter. They're actually a part well, of the conversation. Well, I don't mean like historically. I mean like this season, this team. Do you no, believe, but, do you but there's enough this guys on this team, team that I like. Tilly was on that team. Perkins, Williams, okay. Melson, Huchamura. I didn't even know that he could do this. Like I, he shot the last shot. He tried. He's so confident in himself. Yeah, he, he took did. the game winning three. Like he had Perkins and Melson yeah. and all these other people wide open. He was like, "No, nah, I'm gonna take it." I would not have passed the Perkins though. Perkins was one for nine against St. Mary's, and he had and just he had the three, one. Uh, and he airballed it, and he did the thing where he was like, "It was tipped. It was tipped." And they showed the replay, and it wasn't even close to tipped. That's always. I good. wonder. I wonder what the cutoff. I wonder what situation. Um, 
there's like a there's a fine line between when you when you say the other guy tipped it and when you just stare at your hands and start wiping them on your shorts and you're like man it slipped out of my hands and you do that move and uh it, the, the time and score situation dictates that when you airball it that badly and i wonder what the uh like when you know because like, if he would have shot that in the first half all he would have done is just start wiping his hands on his shorts and it's like damn that one slipped that well, had a little moisture on you, my hands you, what you got to do is you go grab a manager it gives you a towel and you wipe your hands down and then you look at yeah, your hand yeah. like you're not even sure what a hand is you're just confused <laughs> like <laughs> that, that's what you have to do that's the move. you make a big show of it um, yes so the, the second highest team on on by the way i'm going to answer these two i i care about gonzaga i still think gonzaga is a good team and uh and I'm not just saying that because they beat Ohio State by like 27. Um, I think they're just inconsistent. They That's just got to figure out a way it. to get guys play. Like, yeah, Josh Perkins is Josh Perkins was terrible. Silas Melson was like non-existent. Tilly mm-hmm. didn't play well. Um, I still think Gonzaga is a good team. So, uh, St. Mary's, do you care? Yes, because of they're Jock. The highest ranked. Just because of Jock. Uh, okay. I feel like they have a chance yeah. uh, to make some noise. I think Landell's really good. I enjoyed watching him play as much as I was just kidding about him. Owning Jonathan Williams in the paint, I, I like old school big men like that. I think he uh, he doesn't bring the ball down, Mark Titus, and that's one of my biggest pet peeves with big men. Uh, if if he catches up top, yeah. he just puts it in. And uh, yeah, I like Jock. Jock's a big enough name now where uh, I care about St. Mary's. What about you? Best, I I definitely care about. Them. I'm back to caring about them. I swore them off because. But here's the question: Do I am I going to watch another game until they play Gonzaga? Probably not. So I guess I I'm kind of hypocritical about that, but. Um, I don't know. I, 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 Jock was Jock is definitely to me the best big man in college basketball. Who's not a freshman? Uh, if if such an award exists, that would go to him. Um, and they're fun to watch. Yeah, they, I like efficient teams. I just if they wouldn't have lost to Washington State, I would be all in on St. Mary's. I would be just. I just can't get over that. Like they lost to Washington. This is I don't know, but yeah, I, I still care about them. Um, the third highest West Coast team, and this this might blow your mind, Tate. On Ken, according to Ken Palm. Nevada, or is it Nevada? I'll let you decide. <laughs> it's Nevada, and I do care because of the Martin twins. I don't know if people remember the Martin twins, but Caleb and Cody Martin were two guys that were NC State for quite a while. I think a couple years, maybe just one year. Um, but they caused quite a stir around town, and then they transferred to Nevada. And I said to myself, I wonder if that's the first time someone's tran- transferred from the Wolfpack to the Wolfpack. And that's what I was about to say. I don't know. Maybe it is. But anyways, Caleb Martin's been great. I mean, he had like 24, I remember seeing on the bottom line a couple. I can't remember who it was against. Maybe like San Jose State, possibly someone like that. But uh, yeah, I care about the Martin twins and the, and uh, what they're doing. So Nevada, I do care. You have basketball players I've heard of and want to watch. In. So I'm in. Okay. What, what about Eric you? Eric Musselman coaches them. Yeah, exactly. Um, I do not care. <laughs> I, I I honestly don't care. Like I, I remember a, f- a month or so ago, I saw Nevada was ranked like 22nd, and I just scratched my head and I was like, "What is that true?" And then uh, the next day they lost a game and kind of fell out of the rankings. I was like, "Okay, good. Now I don't have to care about them." I'm sh- I'm sure they have a good team. Nothing against you, Nevada. I looked up like who they've played and who they've they they have zero wins that I care about. I, I looked at like I wonder who this team has beaten that's like can grab my attention. They have they are 17 and three though, uh, undefeated in the Mountain West. So I'm sure they have a good team, and I don't look like an idiot in March when. <laughs> with my luck, they're probably going to be like the 12 seed, and Ohio State will be a five, and they'll beat the shit out of them. But um, we should go. Uh, we should go to Reno one day, like w- at one time. I used to watch Reno Reno 911. Great show, hilarious show. Oh, I love that show. I would love to go to Reno. And see what show. it's like. Um. So next next on the list, Arizona. I think we both would agree. We definitely care about Arizona. Right? Yes, of course. They're a final. Okay. They're a final right. four. We don't really need. To, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I we don't really need to like get into it. Too. I just I just for. Yeah, just for the just sake of the exercise, we for had the to sake mention, of the game. Yeah, we, yes. we obviously we obviously care about Arizona. Um, Arizona State. Ooh. This one could go either way for me. I'm gonna say I'll start. I'll say I don't think I care anymore. <laughs> I think I'm out. I think I'm officially out on Arizona State. I mean, they've lost. Let me let me look it up. As you, I I'm, I got you. I'll tell you who they lost to. Recently, they lost to Oregon at home. They barely beat right. Oregon State, seventy-seven seventy-five. And then they just lost at Stanford, 86-77. And then prior to that, obviously, we remember the Colorado loss. We remember the Arizona loss. Um, and they could have lost to Utah during this. I mean, they've, they've just been terrible. I mean, ever since 2018 hit, Bobby Baggs has been getting hit, hit hard. But they're getting recruits still. That's the thing. Yeah. The, the reason I care about Arizona State is because Bob Hurley is still getting recruits. And I totally forgot. Do you remember this yeah. Dove, Dove for Men commercial like four years ago? 
It was like during the NCAA tournament. It was Bob oh, Hurley showering, yeah, yeah. and I I totally forgot That's that right. that happened. <laughs> and at the time, I was like, "What is Bob Hurley angling for? Like with his Dove commercial?" And it's to show that he can market himself and therefore market future recruits and get them to the NBA and get them endorsement deals. So I, I like Bob Hurley had a long plan the whole time. So I, I care. I care about right. Bob Hurley in Arizona State. Arizona. Arizona State has lost four of six. That's what I wanted to look up. It is four of six. And the two that they won, one was a three-point win at Utah, and one was a two-point win at home versus Oregon State. So, like, very, very close to a six-game losing streak for Arizona State after being ranked, like, what, third or something in the country? Yes, got Um, all the way up to number two in the country. And they were the last undefeated team of the season. People forget. Yeah, I, I... I definitely don't care about Arizona State. Uh, they can get me to care again if they if they do something different, but right now I don't care. I don't care at all. Uh, USC is next. We got we got two more. USC. I care about Metu. No, I don't care. Oh, you don't care? I, yeah, I, I don't <laughs> no, really. I, don't care. I, I don't was gonna ca- answer for you. Yeah, I don't care about uh, infield, and I don't care about how good they were supposed to be and how they're not living up to expectations. I don't care about that whole storyline, yeah. but I do care about people hitting people in the nuts. So that makes me care about Metu. That's true. Because I'm just still right. can't uh, believe he only got suspended for a half. Um, and last but not least, Boise State. I was surprised to learn is actually good. I'm gonna say I do not care about them, obviously. Um, and I, I I'm not a mid major hater. I I just said I cared about Gonzaga and St. Mary's. It's just Boise State. I can't tell you a single thing about this team. They have not done anything exciting. I, I, as I did with Nevada, the other Mountain West team on this list, I looked up like who they've played. Nothing jumped out of the page to me. Um, Nevada actually plays Boise State on Saturday, this Saturday, tomorrow. So mm. um, maybe that's the game I'll watch, and we'll see what happens there. But do you care about Boise State? Do they have a uh, Do they have a blue court? A blue court? No, no, they don't. Okay, then I don't no, care. No, they don't. No, that's the only reason no. I ever cared um, ever. So no. And then the last one, the last one that wasn't in the top fifty, but Joe Lenardi said is going to make the NCAA tournament. It's its last four in right now is UCLA, mm. which I kind of care about them. We, I, I care about them for personal reasons because you and I went to the game and we had a fun experience. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, and then I sat right next to the bench and and at the uh, at the New Orleans thing. So, um, I'm going to say yes, I care about UCLA, but. What are your thoughts? I do care as well, just because of the treatment, because of UCL Lady. Um, I do have a funny thing. I don't know if you've seen this. Steve Alford, if you go to his Wikipedia page, um, it was updated. I think it got fixed. It may not have gotten fixed. You may be able to see this before this recording comes out. But uh, someone changed it to, is a mediocre men's head basketball coach uh, at UCLA. (laughs) Yeah, like they updated his Wikipedia profile. Uh, And then all these UCLA people were like uh, favoriting it it and sharing it, of course. Um, yeah, oh, it, Wikipedia it, vandalism is so funny. It's too so good. Funny. It's too good. And it gets reported too quickly now. People used to let it linger. Oh. You know, we're, we we want too much. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I, you, you care more about West Coast basketball than I realized. I was I was hoping for you to just say, no, I don't care about any of these teams. Well, if I was playing playing into the bit, I would have done that. But I'm trying to act like I care, Titus. I'm trying to show these people You're that I do watch. Yes, and I'm unbiased, and I'm just a fan of the sport in general. I'm trying to be Dickie V over here, okay? I can't believe it. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll come back. We 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 have a little, a slight update to the Billy Billy uh, Preston Michael Porter Jr. mysteries. Uh, we'll get into that, and then we'll get to the manager stories and wrap this all up. Quick break to get a word from our sponsor, Casper Mattresses. I know, Mark Titus, you do not have a Casper mattress, right? I do not have a Casper mattress. I'm excited to get one. Please, Casper, drop the bag. Well, they probably won't because I have one, and it's so comfortable and so great that that's probably enough for our show. Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time with three mattress models. That's right, three. The original the original Casper, the Wave, and the Essential, Casper mattresses are perfectly designed to soothe and cradle. You hear that, Titus? Soothe and cradle your natural geometry. Not to mention, the breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night, and it's delivered right to your door in a small, how-did-they-do-that size box with free shipping and returns in the U.S. and Canada. But the best part is that you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk free sleep on a trial. After all, you spend one third of your life sleeping, so you should be comfortable. Start sleeping ahead of the curb with Casper. Get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash shining and use shining at checkout. That's casper.com slash shining, offer code shining for $50 off your mattress purchase. Terms and conditions apply, and hopefully, Titus, you'll get one of these one day. 
All right, Tate, so uh, it's time for the Billy Preston slash Michael Porter Jr. mystery. We're going to just wedge them together into one mystery. Kyle, play the music. Um, I'm going to start with Michael Porter. Uh, Gee we, we opened up our DM. We opened up our... <laughs> We opened up our direct messages on Twitter at, at One Shining Podcast, or no, at One Shining Pod, I'm sorry, uh, is our our Twitter handle. So we opened up the DMs for the manager segment we're about to get to, where mm. we're going to air the manager's dirty laundry. Um, but a lot of people started sending us stuff that was not a manager story, and it was just kind of like fan mail and whatever. And one little, one DM caught my eye, Tate, as I was, I was, I was scrolling through and preparing for the show, uh, kind of hashing through the manager stories. Somebody sent us a DM that said, Michael Porter Jr. is coming back to play Auburn on Wednesday. This this next coming Wednesday. So what, like five days from now? Um, he's going to be back to play Auburn. And then he he included a hand clap emoji, one hand hand clapping emoji thing, and then two emojis of the eyes with the eyebrow raise, like the hey, take a look at this thing. You know what I'm saying? The, just what? the eyes with the eyebrows over Yes. Top. What do you mean? That's but what we got. Who, who was the, the, the person so, that sent it? Did they seem like a reliable source? Was it Jonte well, Porter? Here's what happened. Was it Quanzo? So I I thought I thought the reason he was sending it to us at first was that like news just broke and he was like kind of just saying, Hey, how about that news? That's pretty crazy, right? So I go to Google. I'm like, did I miss something? Is Michael did Michael Porter say he's coming back to play Auburn? Nothing on Google. I look into who this guy is that DM'd us. Couldn't find like he's basically anonymous, like just some anonymous character on on the internet. Like he wasn't he wasn't um he he wasn't a part of like alt Twitter or anything like that. But he was uh I couldn't really tell if this guy was legit or not. But I gotta say, Tate, I'm I'm all like he I'm sold. I my I felt my heart start beating faster when I read this, and uh I, I just I just wanted to put it out there that that I'm I can't go back now. I'm I'm buying it. I'm saying Michael Porter Jr. is coming back against Auburn. So if that happens, you and I just broke the news right here. That's, that's why I want to put that out there. So. And I will say this. I mean, I did see like some mock draft stuff come out, and Michael Porter Jr. is like outside the top five. And I think the whole point of him sitting out was to, you know, preserve the fact that he was a top five pick. And now he might have to play to earn a top five pick. Uh, so maybe that's why he's going to come back. Yeah. That's my mystery. I think he just thought he was a yeah. surefire top three pick, and that's not the case anymore. Uh, what about Preston? What's so going not, on with Billy Preston? So Billy Preston... Uh, not a lot either in this in this one, um, but one thing did. St- yeah, not a ton of updates. The Michael Porter thing, though, I I don't know. I just I, I'm you and I are both fans of speculation. We're both fans yes. of rumors. Um, so I you know I just had to share it. I had to throw it out there, and I in doing so I realized that now people are just going to spam the shit out of us with fake stories and hope that I read them on the podcast <laughs> moving forward. I'm I'm sure that's what I just uh I'll open that uh. Pandora's box, but um, I don't know. Uh, it Preston, turns out though, Michael Porter Jr. That, shot Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you send us a DM, I'm going to believe it. Uh, <laughs> so Preston, the Preston update is this: Bill Self went on Jeff Goodman's radio show, which uh, Jeff Goodman has a radio show. Interesting, did not know that. Um, is it in Lithuania? <laughs> <laughs> It is. It is. He's had he's had like four guests so far. The first three were all the balls, and Bill Self was the fourth. Um, and and so the, fu- the Bill- future guests all speak Lithuanian, so uh, they're not yeah. sure if the the viewers will continue to come back. So uh, on Jeff Goodman's radio show, I, I found this from an article. That's the reason I know that Self said this on Jeff Goodman's radio show. Um, he said, "There's no update on Billy, except everybody has not. We have not given up hope or trying." But there's no update, and the reason I bring up that quote is if, if you caught as I was saying that, there's a slight hesitation when he said, "There's no update on Billy except everybody has not," and then he catches himself and says, "We have not given up hope or trying, but there's no update." I'm not sure what that means. He said everybody, and then changes to we. Like if if at first he was not including himself as part of the everybody that's working on this case, mm. and then he's like, "Oh, I should probably include myself in this." I don't really know. Maybe it was just like a. a he was just trying to find the right words and and stumbled over himself, and that was that. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but listen, it gets it gets better. Mm. He goes on to say, "I'd say complicated may be a fair word describing the the case. Everybody is trying on our end to try to make some good happen. It seems to me whenever we think that's a possibility, then there's another hang up or potential hang up. I wouldn't say hang up, as you know, in the climate we've got to make sure we dot every I and cross every T. We are still optimistically hopeful on Billy. So if you cut that, Tate, 
he he did it again. He's like, <laughs> I, I we have a hang up. Well, I wouldn't say hang up. So we have a pattern here, Tate, is what I'm saying, is that Bill, we don't really have a, a lot of substance to any of this stuff, but we have a pattern now of Bill Self twice in a row, two quotes, um, where he's just kind of trying to choose his words carefully. And well, um, I don't know, I just I felt like that was a little interesting. It's called being very savvy because it makes it seem like he ha- like there's some trepidation there as to you know what the situation is and he doesn't know what he can say, but he also doesn't want to implicate himself, right? Because if you say mm-hmm. we, right. and you say I, and you say us, and you say me, then it's on you. But if you say That's everybody, vibe, yep. and you keep it open-ended, then it's not on you. I, I honestly think this situation is, you know, with the car, we understand that that was a problem. I think that car was probably owned by someone close to the university that uh, was not supposed to be given a car to someone like Billy Preston. And I think that it's in compliance. So when he says everybody... He's talking about the compliance office, and he doesn't consider himself a part of that. But then he's like, if I don't say I'm a part of that, then everyone's going to think that I'm trying to do something separate of this whole situation. Because he wants to play him. Self wants to play Billy Preston. Someone's telling him not to. Self is in a a tough spot because he's in a position where he wants to back his guy. He doesn't want to screw over Billy Preston because that doesn't look good for recruiting moving forward. Mm -hmm. No no recruit's going to want to play for a guy that if he throws Billy Preston under the bus. At the same time, he wants to protect himself yes. because this does have vibes of like this isn't a Billy Preston issue. This, yeah, like you said, maybe a booster was getting him in the car. I don't know, Tate. You and I, we love to speculate. This is this is a fun case that a, a, a guy like basically hits a fire hydrant and is out the rest of the year because of it, and no one and, has any details why. And we're not even sure what was and, in the car. You know, like right. maybe a Bobby bag. I love it. Who knows. It's the best. It's the best story. So like, self is like trying to protect his guy, but trying to protect himself, but trying to protect the program as well. And he has no idea what to say. And uh, it's just a fun case. And you and I are gonna are gonna keep talking about it the rest of the year. And um, you know what I call that? Until too, somebody too many so, self interest. Too many self interest. Somebody's going a hundred percent chance. Somebody slides into our DMs with like Billy Preston back for Iowa State <laughs> next day. <Saturday. laughs> and I'm gonna be like, oh shit, it's happening again. Um. All right, let's take a break and uh, and get into the manager dirty laundry segment. And I'm very excited for this because we have a lot of awesome stories. But first, uh, Pro Jam. <laughs> Buying tickets can be complicated and confusing, but there is a simpler way to buy with SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to get tickets to every type of live event. Whether you're catching your favorite musician on tour, shopping for the perfect gift, or searching for a last minute deal to see your favorite team, SeatGeek helps you find the best seats at the best prices fully guaranteed. Nothing beats being there in person for the biggest plays of the year, and SeatGeek will get you closer to the action for a great value. I have the SeatGeek app on my phone, and it's by far the easiest way I've found to shop for tickets. It actually is. It's true. I use SeatGeek all the time. I can be anywhere, and with just a few taps, I can instantly find seats. I am actually looking to to use SeatGeek to buy some Blue Jackets tickets. Um, I'm trying to get into hockey. Uh, Tate, are you in a hockey, Tate? Have we ever talked about this? No. No. Yeah. No. I'm back in Columbus. The Blue Jackets I, are winning. I saw and a Stanley Cup win. That's yeah. all I had. I might, I might try to go to a Cavs game. The Cavs, they, they talk about the Cavs like crumbling right now. Are the Cavs in trouble? Or is this just like a every January, everybody says the Cavs are in trouble, just like they say Kansas might not win the Big 12. And then both end up Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, will LeBron use all of his efforts? Right. Uh, no. Will he use them in the finals in the playoffs? Uh, yes. I'm going to use Seagate try to get tickets to some of these games, but... SeatGeek is designed to make your ticket buying experience easier than ever. SeatGeek saves you time and money by searching multiple ticket sites to compare prices and find amazing deals. And to get you the most bang for your buck, SeatGeek grades every ticket based on value to help you immediately identify the best seats that fit your budget. Plus, every purchase is fully guaranteed so you can shop for tickets with SeatGeek on SeatGeek with confidence. Make SeatGeek your go-to app for finding the best deals on every type of ticket from sports and concerts to comedy and theater. Best of all, our listeners get $20 off their first SeatGeek purchase. $20, state. Just download the SeatGeek yes. app and enter promo code OSP today. That's promo code OSP for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. $20 off could get you, like, you could buy half of a ticket to buy the worst seat in the Schottenstein Center to watch Ohio State because Ohio State basketball prices are still, for some reason, outrageous. So use $20. <laughs> so all you Ohio State fans that don't want to go to the game, use the SeatGeek app, and then uh, maybe you get $20 off. Maybe the prices will actually be reasonable. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code OSP today. Promo code OSP for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. SeatGeek, right seat right now, right from your phone.
All right, Tay, it's time for uh, a segment I'm going to call, I, I think I'm settling on the manager dirty, the manager's dirty laundry, or just call it the dirty laundry, something like that. We're, we're getting closer. Um, maybe a certain uh, a detergent that, that sponsored the pod recently could drop the bag and, and sponsor a segment for us. We mm. get a little laundry detergent situation. I don't know. But it became clear to me as I was going through, um, as I was going through all these stories that uh, dirty laundry works perfectly because- as you'll see, the, 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 just pe- the, so many stories of just like, please do not use my name. <laughs> a ton of a ton of people like mentioning names, coaches' names specifically. Like it, it became like a, I hate this coach, and you need to know why. And then I'm not going to include those. Um, those of you who are listening and and want to contribute and and please keep sending us stories. We're going to do this every week. This is going to be a ton of fun. But um, don't mention coach names. Just just kind of like make it vague because I it, it, one. I'm not trying. We're not trying to like throw any coaches under the bus with anything. Um, we're we're not. That's not the point of this. The point is just to kind of like tell the the antics of like how managers have a ton of fun and are, and get up to are up to shenanigans. And two, we would probably get sued. And um, we already have a lawsuit coming with CBS when one shining <laughs> moment happens. And I don't know. So that's that. I'm gonna say I'm gonna start with that. But um, are you ready to get into this, Tate? Oh, I'm so ready. I'm are jacked you, up. Are you ready to hear what the people had to say? All right. Yes. Here's our first story. I, I was a D3 manager for three years. One year, we had three DUIs and a pot possession on a homecoming weekend. So every Saturday, we had practice at 6 a.m. to make sure guys didn't go out. As the manager, I didn't really give a shit, showed up hungover as hell one time to practice. The coaches could see it in my eyes. So to mess with me, the assistant coach decided to do drills for two straight hours with a buzzer going off like every 20 seconds. Okay. Okay. So basically... Hungover. Um, this one, <laughs> this I was, guy drinks. I was, okay, I was on. Yeah, this guy drinks. Hungover. Three DUIs and a pop. So he said we had three DUIs and pop possession in one year. Is that the managers <laughs> or the players? I think it's got to be the players, right? It's got to be the players or the manager. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, I don't know. Maybe they're all together. The managers, you, teamwork. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. I I was on my college's swim team, walk on, and became a captain. I took summer courses my sophomore year. I worked as a lifeguard between classes, so we're kind of losing the plot here. It's not a basketball manager, but we'll we'll go with it. Um, I worked as a lifeguard to make ends meet. I decided it would be fun to stick coins into in the door jammers so I could break in later that night. Uh, I did a bunch of jumps off the three meter diving board, chilled in the hot tub with two of my friends who are girls. I, I love that part. Who are, my <laughs> friends are girls. We chilled in the hot tub with two of my friends who are girls. But then he says is the assistant basketball coach was there as well. The oh, campus cops show up. We all we all own up to it, and we get fifty dollars fines, probation, and we had to write them a formal apology. Hashtag worth it. I'm drunk. I'll elaborate if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> so he was he was drunk as I sent us the message. Uh, one guy sent us a, a DM that just said, "How about girls' high school volleyball manager stories?" and then said nothing else. So that that <laughs> that guy gets the, the that's the creepiest message we got. That is definitely the creepiest message we got. Yeah, please don't send us another message. Um, this one, this one's a pretty good one. I like this one. At breakfast during a road trip in Alaska, our then head coach referred to one of our rotation big guys as a, quote, mess of a human being while saying, quote, I have no idea what the fuck is wrong with that kid. <laughs> his, reason for, his reason for saying that is that the kid would, wouldn't drink with the rest of the team while underage. Coach thought it was messing with the team camaraderie. So that's a fun story. I like that one. That's a good story. And that's totally believable, too. Yes. That Possibly the, the best is, one. Yeah. That reminds me of a uh, uh, Costa Cufas. Costa was that way at, at Ohio State. He was very anti, like, I can't believe you guys are drinking beer. And then uh, Matt Terwilliger at a party one time at a frat party. Maybe, yeah, it was a frat party. Uh, gets gets a thing of beer and Costa was lecturing him. He's like, I can't believe you drink that. It's bad for your health. It's whatever, whatever. And mm. then Twig doesn't say anything and just takes his beer and pours it on Costa's head. <laughs> and it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, Let's see here. What else we got? Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to do some quick. Uh, oh, so, uh, so we can't say names, right? For the for the dirty laundry. Yeah, I don't want to say names. I don't want to put coaches on blast. Can we say general? Uh, no, 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 not coaches' names, just the managers' names themselves. But I guess then they can put oh, we two could and two put, together. We could say managers' names. If, I think, if, I think yeah, maybe if you want to say their first us, name and then yeah. maybe say the yeah, general say the vicinity name. of the country that this happened in. Maybe I don't know. Uh, he said, "Not a not quite a basketball manager, but it was with football at D three level." There was a game my junior year where we went to Jackson, Mississippi for a game. Oof. It was a 13-hour drive, and we played on Saturday. We got in on Friday evening and had our walkthrough. 
Then myself, another student coach, and two injured players started hanging out, and one thing led to another, and we had finished a handle. <laughs> Someone jokingly brought up finding a strip club, and 20 minutes later, we were pulling money out of the hotel ATM, waiting on our taxi to get there to take us to Black Diamonds, a very urban hip-hop strip club. Mm. We show up with four average-looking white dudes, and we're the only white guys there. Turns out it was an open bar, <laughs> which is just absolutely insane. I, I don't believe this. Yeah, there's no way that's club. an open we bar. Sh- <laughs> we shut it down bar. until about. F- <laughs> we shut it down until about four a.m. Yeah, Kyle speaking from experience there. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do anything. To we bring shut you it in. down to about four. Uh, we shut it down to four a.m. And then a few of us ended up on stage as props to an amateur stripping contest. Mm. One of the student coaches came back and threw up all over the hotel room that we had to explain to the real coaches as food poisoning. Then we had to go stand on the sidelines in ninety degree heat for three hours. We ended up losing in pretty crushing fashion, but on the bright side, we got to take in the 13-hour bus ride. Uh, it was pretty somber and quiet, and we got time to reflect on our, our poor life decisions. Um, that one was pretty fun. That's pretty fun. Um, I'm trying to think of what school would go to Jackson, Mississippi for a game. But Yeah, no, I, don't know. I was trying to do that too. This guy says, I walked into a team breakfast on game day, and all the plates had $20 bills on them. Coach comes in and tells the players that they get $20 for every foul they draw on the other team's stud point guard. So coach is dropping bags. I love it. This is a manager story and a bag dropping story. This is like bounty gate, but it's like plate gate. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, every foul. Yeah, $20. I didn't think anything of it really. A few weeks later, I was called into the AD's office and is asked, and I was asked what I saw that day. The coach was fired a few days. The coach was fired a few days later. <laughs> <laughs> that's like pulling it. out all the stops. We, He's like, yeah, I'm just going to pay these kids. Screw it. <laughs> Anyone can draw a foul. 20 we, bucks. We, uh, <laughs> we got, we got narcs that listen to us too. I love that. But it sounds like, it sounds like the AD kind of called him in. He wasn't, he didn't go out and narc on his own, but that's funny. Um, this guy says in the 2013, 14 season, he was, he was, uh, well, it says he, UNC was playing Duke in the annual manager game. I don't know if he was a manager or not. He didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't identify. He says the game sadly no longer exists. Anyway, as one would expect, both sides cared, though Duke took it way too seriously. So he's obviously a Carolina guy. Um, I honestly spent most of the game laughing at the Duke coach as he frantically called out cleverly named plays such as elbow circle <laughs> and protested every foul call and non-call. Near the end of the game, UNC was ahead by a comfortable margin and the Duke coach had mostly shut up. However, in the closing seconds, as one of the female UNC managers went up for a layup, she was clobbered from behind by one of the Duke managers. Uh, within seconds, both benches had cleared and erupted into a shoving match, the likes of which the Dukies weren't ready for. In the end, there weren't any punches thrown, but we were all left feeling reinforced and all the stereotypes and hatred we, we held towards that school from Durham. Well, and I just want to, the reason I want to bring this one up is because this guy's absolutely right that you held true to your stereotypes. That's the most Carolina Duke thing I've ever heard in my life. That your that your managers, all you all you Carolina types with your boat shoes and your khakis, just start like pushing each other, and no punches are thrown. And oh, it, it's well, just like you said, Tate. Where you're like, I saw I get, saw Austin Rivers, and I farted on him. You're about to get wrecked. Like, you're about to get wrecked by the truth because whoever sent that in is a phony and a liar. Because February 11th, 2014, I am at the final manager game, Whoa. Duke, North Carolina. <laughs> And I was the one that broke this story and was on the radio. And I'm about to play the video right now. And you know that an actual fight did start in this game. And I was there to cover the whole thing and video the whole thing. And the fight, no and the fight started between Ryan Kelly's little brother. Yes, with Ryan, that Ryan Kelly of the Los Angeles Lakers and of Duke. And of Bill Cowers, you know, whatever son. He married Bill Cowers' daughter. That is That Ryan Kelly, his little brother, Sean Kelly, got in a fight that night. And I partially responsible because I said a lot of shit to him. And I have the live video. I video this whole thing. I was on the radio the next day, talked all about it. Wait, what? Oh, yes. And it was a real fight, physical fight. I'm going to send you the video right now so you can watch it. Yes. This is unbelievable. This is this is Why? one of, this so, is one of the things that helped my media career, Mark Titus. I was on the radio all day the next this, day. I broke the story. I filmed the, first, the whole thing. Yes. Is this the first instance of a guy telling a story and making it less interesting? Yeah. Whoever <laughs> told that story was like that was the worst <laughs> way that doing? story happened. First of all, it, it was a complete brawl. 
<laughs> everyone and all the players. No were, shit. So the players ref the game. So like James Michael was refing the game at the time. Like all like the big players ref the game. So like not only did it happen with the managers getting in a fight, but then the real players are there and they're they're getting chippy with each other. The game is the next day. So after the fight happens the night before, then the next day they actually played each other, and it was like they were going to get a fight the the whole time. The whole thing was a blowout. It was insane. That was well, twenty fourteen. Oh my! I take good job, Tate. I Bring apologize. Down the hammer. I take back my uh, I take back my comments about how it wasn't a real fight. Delete, That's the only reason I wanted to tell the story. Delete but, that message and tell whoever sent you that. Oh just my Just step gosh. it up. Who were they? That's incredible. Congrats to congrats to Tate Frazier breaking a story. By the way, great job. How many stories have you broke since then? <laughs> well, I started working for a place that doesn't do that. We just blog. We uh, we broke the uh, no, we just broke the uh, Michael Porter story. Oh, you're right, you're right, and Billy Preston when he, when he comes back you're for right. Auburn. You're right. Um, here's here's a quick one. We had a no fouls practice where a walk on got hockey checked into a wall and slumped to the ground, passed out for like ten minutes before the head coach <laughs> let the trainer go look at him. <laughs> the walk on quit the next day. <laughs> That's a. Uh, that was a story that spoke to me very. There's nothing in the world that I hate more than no fouls practices, basketball practices, oh and no God. foul or uh, and no out of bounds practices. Which it sounds like this was one and the same, where the where the coach is like, the ball is live, and you're, and you're like fighting for a rebound and in into the stands. It's like the like, Oklahoma well, drill. You're basically literally just fighting for yeah. the ball. Ugh, that sounds. Terrible. What is the point of making us kill each other for? <laughs> yeah, for what? For I don't understand this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's a fun story. Uh, we got, we got a couple more. This one, this one's my. This one's one of my favorites. Um, last year on Valentine's Day road trip, our best player had a real dilemma on his hands that he came to me with advice on. Like this guy was really torn up about it. His problem, bruh, I don't know which girl to put on the gram. <laughs> so we sat and had a, a decently long conversation about why mm. he couldn't put his girlfriend on his Instagram for a Valentine's Day post. Because he would lose all his other side chicks that wouldn't want to talk to him on the road. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> unless, unless you think it's just one or two girls he had on the side, this dude had at least a starting five of girls he could hit up. College basketball players—they're just like us. So uh, th that's that's totally <laughs> true too. Is like the players go to the managers and they're like, "Hey, I need help," and then the managers their eyes light up and they're like, "Oh, cool." Am I going to help you with your homework? Am I going to help you with... <laughs> it's like, no, so listen, I got these chicks and you got to sort this out for me. <laughs> you tell me which one is the hottest and I'll choose her. That is definitely that is definitely a manager task. Um, All right, this is the last one. And, and this this ties this ties it all together and brings it into the uh, the dirty laundry segment and, and why we're going to call it the dirty laundry. Uh, this one isn't quite as like raunchy or whatever, but it, but I thought it was a fun story. I was a manager at James Madison from 2012 to 2016. My freshman year, we were playing in the CAA Championship in Richmond, Virginia. We had three uniform sets, home whites, road purples, and Vegas gold, which is very, very light gold. Our first two games in the tourney, we wore white and purple. Uh, we were the road team in the championship game, so we assumed that we could wear our alternates, so we didn't wash the whites or purples, and they just sat in a dirty laundry bag all sweaty and bunched up. <laughs> So we get to the gym for the championship game. The guys are warming up, and as usual, the referees don't come on the court until about 30 minutes until tip-off. At this point, they see us warming up in our Vegas gold jerseys and tell one of our coaches that we can't wear those because it's, it is too close to the, uh, the other team we were playing's white jerseys. We scramble because the purples are back at the hotel in my hotel room. In a spur of the moment, myself in a full suit, another manager, a graduate assistant, and a redshirt player – Sprint to our hotel, oh. which was about four blocks away in 80 degree weather. Grab the jerseys out of my room and hop on the bus that met us at the hotel to take us back to the Richmond Coliseum. We make it to the locker room with about 12 minutes to spare, and we tell the players they have to do a jersey switch. They had no idea that the jerseys had not been washed, although they were soaking wet with sweat and smelled absolutely atrocious since they had just been festering in a bag overnight. Oh. Nonetheless, the guys put on the Nonetheless, the guys put the dirty and probably very unhealthy purple jerseys on, and this is where it gets good, Tate. And we went out and steamrolled Northeastern to win the CAA and advance to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 19 years. To this day, I'm not exactly sure if the players knew that they were wearing dirty jerseys. So that's a manager story. That was a fun story. That was a fun a story, one. and that was like a like, happy ending. That was great. I, I thought yeah. it was going to be like the pl yeah. some player got pneumonia from wearing his old jersey no. or something. It. And it all tied in the dirty laundry. That's why I think we should call it the dirty laundry. But I like that segment. I think that's got staying power. Agreed. I think that uh, we, pe please keep sending us, uh, send us your manager stories. We'll keep reading them. Um, again, we 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 like that you're. Uh, we like when players you're trying to throw players under the bus, coaches under the bus. But uh, 
keep it sort of vague and anonymous because we it's don't want to It's more fun that way. It's more fun to, for me to guess yeah. who it is. Like it, when, as you were telling that story, mm-hmm. I was like, what school is that? James Madison? You know, I'm trying to think about the, the color yeah. schemes. It's more fun that way. Don't ruin the surprise. Yeah, the, well, well, the part the part where I said I was a manager at James Madison probably gave away the, uh, the James <laughs> Madison part. But yeah, that was, that really was good. Say that? You're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no way. I literally guessed that yeah, in my head. I was like, all right, perv, okay, definitely, yeah. probably James Madison. I was like, oh, ECU, James Madison. Wow. Um, I was going to I was going to close out our Friday with another Am I Dumb segment Um, because the feedback on my credit versus debit rant was incredible last week. No mm. one no one gave me a good answer, Uh, by the way. But um, anyway, the, the thing I was going to bring up was that I have not seen The Room and everybody has seen The Room. And then Tate, I was explaining this to Tate as we were about to do the pod, and then he just shoots me over like a YouTube link to see this movie, <laughs> The Room, and I was like, "Oh, well, there goes that segment." So yeah. The- um, anyway, I felt really stupid though because I don't. I, this this is a movie. I searched everywhere. I couldn't find the the room anywhere. Like I've tried to go find it in theaters. So people are like, "Yeah, it's shown in some theaters," and I can't find it anywhere. I can't find it on any of like the channels I have on Roku. Like it's not on HBO or Netflix. I was like, how the hell are people watching this movie? Everybody's seen it, mm. and then Tate's like, "Yeah, hey, you dumbass." I said. Just watch Oh, right hi, here. Mark. Oh, so. And then I sent anyway. you the link. So I have, I have, I have nothing for our "Am I Dumb?" Our world famous, critically acclaimed "Am I Dumb?" segment that um is we we probably shouldn't even do it anyway because people are too mean. Like the, the the point of the segment is like we're trying to poke fun at ourselves, and then everyone's the, the, basically the responses I keep getting are like, "Yes, you are dumb. You're an idiot. How do you not know this?" Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll take we'll take a week off. Let's just close it out with some. Uh, you got any shout outs or anything like that? Before you say games to watch, uh, just quick shout out before we get to games to watch. I just want to shout out Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is a nomad right now with uh, his allegiance in college. He's out in Utah. He's had he already just broke Carl Malone's record for the most twenty point games by a rookie on it or by a Jazz member. Um, he's been great. Probably should be up for rookie of the year. He's already had five thirty point games. But I don't know if you've seen this, but BYU, Utah, all the colleges in the state of Utah are trying to sway mm-hmm. Donovan Mitchell to align himself with them. So. So BYU is like send him gear. Uh, Utah was tweeting at him like when he was at a game the other night, like, hey, Donovan, because he doesn't have Louisville anymore. He doesn't have Patino. <laughs> so they're trying to get Donovan Mitchell to act like he played college basketball in Utah so that they could use him as a recruiting piece in the future. I think it's savvy. I think it's smart. Oh shout out to Utah basketball. Shout out to BYU. Shout can, out to Donovan Mitchell. That's my last shout out. Can you imagine? Uh, can, can You just put it in my head. Rick Patino going to BYU. Oh, Oh my God, Rick Pitino at BYU. Just the clash of cultures. BYU kicked a guy off the team for having sex once when they were ranked third in the country. <laughs> yes, the Jimmer for debt year. Yes. they didn't kick him off the team. They well, just, they suspended. No, they did him. kick it. They suspended him for the year, right? I think like for the whole year. Yeah, for the rest Brandon of the time. Brandon Davies. Yeah, Brandon Davies. Yeah. Yeah, they're ranked third in the country, and the guy got uh, his girlfriend pregnant. I think is what happened, mm-hmm. and he was kicked off. They suspended for the rest of the year. Can you imagine Rick Pitino there? That's meanwhile. I, I have a feeling if the Donald guy had a Dr. Pepper, he's not he got kicked off the team. So, yeah. like, imagine yeah. that that situation. Yeah, we need Rick there. Let's bring um, Rick. Bring Rick to BYU. That would be oh god, that that would be absolutely amazing. Fun fact, by the way, I, I think I brought this up on the on our old podcast before. Louisville leads the country in um the the most time scoring sixty nine points in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> the number one program scored sixty nine points in the NCAA tournament is Louisville. And what makes it even funnier is that the winningest program in the history of college basketball that has never scored sixty nine points. Exactly in the NCAA tournament is BYU. Those are true. Those are both completely true facts, Tate. Please bling. He's got to go to BYU now. <laughs> He's got to score 69 for uh, BYU. Come on. Uh, yeah. If there's anybody who could do it, it's that man. Um, so some games to watch this Saturday. Uh, Ohio State is playing Minnesota in Madison Square Garden. I only bring that up because they're playing in Madison Square Garden. Um, but also, is that the only reason I bring it up? Ohio State's on fire. They play Minnesota. Minnesota, speaking of Patinos, they got to figure something out. They 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 are in a very bad spot right now. Mm-hmm. Um, they were, yeah, they got to figure it out. So <laughs> I'm a little nervous about that game. Uh, but the the bigger game, the more relevant game is probably Villanova at UConn Saturday. Yes. Uh, at noon. Um, but is it rele- like Villanova is going to blow them out, right? Well, I, I think this is a relevant uh-huh. game for people that want to catch up and see how bad of a job Kevin Ollie's doing, and if he is really going to mm-hmm. be the good guy of the year. He might be good guy of the year. Uh, when it's all said and yep. done, I think Tom, that's a fun game to watch. Tom Crean is going to love that game because, mm-hmm. yeah, it's on CBS, so the entire country is going to be – not the entire country, but you know, people that don't really follow college basketball closely will just turn on CBS. 
uh, and see that and then be like, what the hell happened to UConn as they're down by 35? And then Tom Crane's going to be licking his lips like, yes, that's my job. I'm taking the UConn job. Um, Saturday at, at 2 o'clock, uh, there are three Big 12 games at once. Take your pick. Texas at West Virginia is on CBS right after the Villanova-UConn game. Texas Tech is at Iowa State, and Oklahoma is at Oklahoma State. So we got West Virginia, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma all playing at the same time. Those are the three teams that are trying to take down Kansas and end the streak, which is not going to happen. So uh, those are all going on. Check those out. Yeah. Xavier's at Seton Hall on Saturday as well. The only game this weekend between two ranked teams. Um, Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's on Fox. That's the biggest game of the weekend, right? On FS1? Yeah. It's on Fox. It's on Real Fox. Oh, it's on Real it's Fox. It's on Big Boy Fox. Yeah, Real yeah. Fox. That'll be yeah. fun. Uh, put on your Big Boy, yeah. <laughs> put, 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 Flor- I was going to say, put on your Big Boy britches. We're on Real TV now. Um, Florida at Kentucky is Saturday at 8.15 on ESPN. That is uh, the SEC game. Florida, I think, is leading the SEC right now, right? Mm-hmm. I want to say everyone kind of swore off Florida after they when they started sucking. They're they're bringing it back. Uh, so that's going to be a big, big SEC implication game um, for the Gators and and Kentucky. Uh, West Virginia is then at TCU on Monday, and and Nebraska is at Ohio State on Monday. And I think that's going to be Ohio State's first loss. I think we're going to lose Nebraska because we're going to be tired. So. Um, from the schedule. Way to get ahead of this. Way to, way to call it a schedule to loss. Way yeah, to go. I know. Good it's move. A schedule loss. It's a schedule loss. So those are some games to check out if you're looking for stuff. That Those are the games that Tate and I will probably be talking about on Tuesday. Um, anything else you got, Tate? Uh, North Carolina playing at Georgia Tech. Ben Lammers, Josh Pasner versus nah, the boys. Nah, 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 That'll be fun. Nah, you should cares? check it out. Who cares? Go watch. Who cares? Who cares? But otherwise, Who cares? nothing don't, else. Don't. I mean, <laughs> just keep watching the NBA fights. Uh, we'll see what happens if they actually ever fight each other. And uh, this has been a fun time. Please send your stories. More stories. Uh, I want more and more more dirty laundry stories. All right. That's good. All right, man. I'll see you on Tuesday. Save the crew.